Looking for the perfect Facebook post but low on time? Check out Foremost on Facebook for posts that you can easily share on your own page. Foremost, for you. Foremostagent.com. At one time, it seemed that the railroad industry was doomed. But thanks in part to the economic stimulus plan, technology improving their efficiency, and cities implementing more commuter lines, railroads are making a comeback. In this interview with MyNewMarkets.com Associate Editor Amy O'Connor, David Adamchek, Vice President and Head of the Railroad Department at Liberty International Underwriters, talks about why this industry is changing for the better and how the railroad insurance market is responding. The railroad industry is very healthy. Um, there has been not only just the natural growth of uh, it, it's more efficient, um, it's more energy efficient, it's good for the environment, and there's also industries like the natural gas drilling that's going on throughout the country right now. Um, frac sand is par a component of that uh, drilling process and railroads have been, I think it's the only way that that frac sand can move from point A to point B. So uh, coal has gone down some, but frac sand has made up for that difference. And then commuter systems, all the big cities have commuter systems already. Um, it's just that now you're looking at the mid-sized cities like Minneapolis, uh, St. Paul, uh, Salt Lake City, Portland, Oregon are expanding their uh, commuter operations and, and we can you know, provide coverage for that. But in terms of coverage and regulation, there hasn't been anything dramatic that's occurred other than from a technology standpoint, um, the government has, uh, is mandating that positive train control be fully implemented by the year 2015. There's some questions whether the railroad industry will reach that uh, deadline. But what that is, it's a new communication system where trains will automatically stop if they are getting too close to another train, which would prevent uh, train collisions, much like uh, Metrolink in California. And that was the impetus for all of this, was uh, a head-on collision between a Union Pacific train and a Metrolink commuter train. And since then uh, is when the government got involved. The problem that the railroads see right now is the technology has not caught up with the mandate. Uh, there's still some products that are part of that system that are not available to the railroads. Plus, it's a very expensive uh, system uh, to install, and the question is the return that the railroads will get on this. Um, I, and there's, I guess there's some question as to the overall safety, but I think from an insurance underwriter, um, that it's, it's a positive uh, advancement you know, to prevent uh, at least collisions in the future. Adam Check says the biggest change for the carrier is a new paperless railroad protective platform that makes them more responsive to the industry. As for the railroad industry's biggest change, rates are finally going up, and Adam Check says after many years of rate decreases, brokers need to prepare their clients and maintain underwriting discipline. This is the first year we're getting rate increases. Uh, we're not seeing the rate increases that the standard market is seeing, um, or overall. Uh, we're, we're seeing in the area up to 5%. And the reason we're not seeing a higher uh, rate increase is because of the amount of markets that are in the industry right now. There was a new market that was uh, introduced last year, and it's hard to get rate the, the proper rate increase when there's so much competition. But my concern is sustaining those rates over the next couple of years. Um, we have several markets uh, doing this business right now, and it's a limited uh, universe of railroad industry. Um, there's only so many railroads out there, and there's only so many supporting companies um, that support the railroad industry. So. Um, to sustain the rates. Right now we're getting some rate increase, but I'm concerned that in the future um, brokers will be looking to go back to the old ways. When you consider railroad business, the, the policy form that we, we write, it includes coverage for 
employee injury, um, derailments, crossing accidents, pollution coverage. There's even a property aspect in the policy form. So you have all this coverage under one form. And if you don't sustain the rates to cover, because railroad business is a volatile business, um, you can have some very significant losses. Well, I, I, I think their, their job is to communicate um, the rate increase and why we're doing it uh, to their clients. Um, first of all, our rate increases aren't anywhere near what other segments are getting. We've seen rate decreases for the last eight to 10 years. Something has to give at some point. And again, as I said earlier, there is volatility in this business. And you have to have a certain amount of market share, you have to have a spread of risk, and you have to get the proper rates in order to uh, have a prof profitable big book of business. And if they don't have that, um, then the brokers are gonna have a problem with markets getting in and out of this business. You know, somebody comes in, we've seen this throughout my career, a market gets in for two years, they think they could make money off of this, and the next thing you know, they're out of the business, and then somebody else new comes in. So you're looking for sustained, uh, you know, stable markets that will continue in this uh, business for the future. And that, at the end of the day, that benefits the, the clients.